Hi there, everyone. Hope you've been enjoying the conference so far. Um, I'd like to start by saying I, was, uh, I created a presentation for this you know, about a week ago. was really happy with it. You know, couldn't wait to talk to everyone about where Citrix are going next with their, their load balancing technology. And then when I started speaking to people at the, at the, uh, the stand this week, I realized that most people don't even know we have any products in the networking space. So how can I start talking to people about how relevant we are you know, in this new world when you didn't even know we were relevant in the old world? So I was asking people, you know, what do you, what do you know of Citrix? Most people said, yeah, we understand the Zen kernel. We know about Zen server. Some people say even we use your remote access software so we can access our Windows applications from home. I think about three people this week said, yeah, we use Netscaler, it's great. No one else even knew about it. So what I thought I'd start with is give you a bit of background, where it came from, what we use it for, why it's a bit different to, to what you'd know of as a load balancer, and then what we're seeing in the market and where we, need to, we, where we feel we need to take our product next. <clears throat> so we don't really call Netscaler a load balancer anymore. We refer to it as an ADC, an application delivery controller, something that that does a little bit more. And we base our product around four key things. We want to provide availability, we want to increase performance, we want to help offload processing, and we want to be able to add security. And this is mainly around web services, web, app web applications. So around availability, it's pretty simple. If we're doing layer four load balancing, what you'd be all familiar with, um, we do layer seven load balancing, so be able to look at what a client is requesting, whether where they're requesting from, what kind of device they're requesting from, or even what's in, in, the, in the request so that we can transfer their request to the right uh, backend piece. We can also balance across geographic locations. So it could be that you've got two different data centers, 10 different data centers, it doesn't really matter. But if you've got, you want a single URL and you want to send your users to the nearest, most performant data center for them, we have a, a global server load balancing built into our availability. So the next piece is performance. How do we make that end user experience that much better? So we can do this by integrating caching into the device, by compressing data, so we can make the payload smaller. And we also have some technology we call front-end optimization. That's something where we actually read the code on the fly. We see an HTML page being delivered. We look at it and we say, the browser doesn't need all that white space, so we remove it. And we see there's some JavaScript being called, so we pull it in, we inline it into that HTML, and we send it out. So you've got less objects to download, the user gets that data much faster, and yeah, their experience of using that site or that service goes up. When we try to offload, what we're trying to do is take processing off the back end. So in our technology, we're able to offload SSL. That helps you in two ways. One, you can take that workload away from the servers, but also it gives you one place to manage an SSL certificate, one place to replace it when it needs renewing. Also, it means you can add extra servers at the back end without having to you know, deploy certificates across there. The other part, and something that actually was one of the founding technologies within Netscaler, that was, is TCP multiplexing. When you think of a, a big high performance website, lots of transactions coming through, there's thousands and thousands of TCP connections coming from clients. They hit the, the web servers, and the web server has to handle that TCP IP stack, all of those requests, very, very fast, opening and closing. It's a huge amount of resource that gets used handling that. So we've got a very custom TCP IP stack in the box, we're able to handle that processing very efficiently. And what we do is we create a permanent set of connections to the backend servers so that we reuse those and the server never has to open and close those TCP sessions. We're looking at taking up to 40% of the, the resources, uh, resource utilization off of those backend services. And then finally, security. Everyone finds security important. It should be built into everything we do. And so we have a web application firewall built directly into Netscaler that can be bound onto all of your virtual objects to, to look after your web services. So that's the background on Netscaler. That's you know, kind of a, the, the 10,000 uh, foot view on it. And it has been look, uh, providing uh, services to e-commerce you know, since 2002. We have huge companies like Amazon uh, using it. Um, customer number two, I believe, was Google and they ran it until they, they developed their own technology. So a real good pedigree in that space. 
The way we feel we've been able to do this, we've been able to create a very, very flexible platform, is because we believe that networking is done better in software. It gives us you know, the edge over our competition. But we don't believe it's our only core differentiation and advantage. And what we believe our core differentiation advantage is the power of any. The fact that we can deliver our technology in any form factor, on any cloud orchestration system, you know, on any public cloud, there is a format that fits, and there's a management tool to, to run that as well. What we also give you is every single you know, highlighted word you see up here is a choice you have to make. Which form factor do I need? Which type of architecture am I going to build? What we also give you is the power, of, uh, the power to change your mind, to be able to switch from one to the other without an issue. We do that because we've got a single API, a single code base, a single feature set, and a single management infrastructure to go across all form factors. So what we really have, and our real differentiator, is the power of one to any. So we've continued to innovate, and to give you a bit of history, Citrix bought Netscaler Incorporated back in 2005. And when we purchased Netscaler, what we inherited as a technology was a physical load balancer. And at the time, people, the, the debate was raging. You, know, you can have a fast load balancer. That fast load balancer would be based on custom ASICs, very much like a switch architecture. Or you could have a flexible load balancer, something where you'd use general purpose processors, very much a software first idea. I mean, you can write new features quickly, but you couldn't have both. Well, we didn't believe them. And in 2007, we released Netscaler MPX using uh, multi-core general purpose processors, and we were able to release the fastest load balancer in the marketplace, uh, continuing to have that flexible and feature-rich product. A couple of years later, a new debate was going on. People wanted to take uh, a software load balancer, they wanted to take a virtual machine so they could use it in their private clouds or, or in, uh, in public clouds. They wanted to be able to consume dynamic data centers. Because we had a software first model, because we were built on general purpose processors, we were able to create Netscaler VPX, which is a virtual machine that you can run on the four major hypervisors. So that's Hyper-V, ESX, our own Zen server, and also KVM. As time went on, we started seeing more challenges. And our customers were coming to us and saying, you know, we've got a real problem. We've got so many load balances in our environment now. We really need to try and consolidate that down. Something we like to call appliance sprawl. So they wanted to bring those all into a single environment. So the one worry we had is if we tried to do this just using virtualization technology, we'd start giving up lots of resources um, to the, the virtualization layer. We'd start you know, having network issues because we, you know, we couldn't push the throughput through those virtual drivers. But what we managed to do using our own Zen server and SRIOV technology is we managed to release Netscaler SDX and that bypassed the, the uh, that the hypervisor layer using SRIV to get to the network components, to get to things like our SSL chipsets, and not pay the, uh, the virtualization penalty when trying to consolidate down onto a single device. So that brings us to pretty much now, and what next? Where are we going next? And I'm sure most of the conversations this week have been around some of these topics, you know, DevOps, microservices, architectures, containers, and it's certainly what we're seeing from our customers out in the field. When we're speaking to people, I've been so surprised at the, the types of industries that are already building teams, or already have teams, working in, in the new agile DevOps fashion, working with containers. Some of the industries that I really thought wouldn't be looking to adopt this until it was far more mature. What that does is it changes the way you start looking at positioning your load balancers and your ADCs. So in the past, the traditional platform would have been you know, an ADC or a load balancer would have sat just like a top of row switch. Traffic would throw, flow through them very much north to south. Applications would sit behind, you would balance them across. Now when you start working with containers, you might still have an ingress layer where you need to balance to the front end application, but the rest of the, the microservices in there, they're talking amongst themselves. And do you really want to come all the way off of your container infrastructure to hit a load balancer to go all the way back in? What we really need is something small that lives with inside that architecture, with inside those container hosts. So that's what Citrix have now released. This is Netscaler CPX. 
So at the moment we have available a load balancer that sits within a Docker, a Docker file format. So you can spin these up on any of your Docker hosts. This brings with it some more complexities. In the past we've had physical devices and some of our customers would run tens or hundreds of these very large load balancers. When we gave them the option to start making these a little bit more modular, you know, they got smaller, we needed a way of managing uh, multiple VPXs. But we're starting to believe that once this technology gets adopted, there's going to be tens of thousands of tiny micro load balancers scattered across uh, an in, a company's environment. And that brings around a problem that we call lots of little. How do you manage lots of little? And what we really need is something that's going to not only manage all of these, keep them all in sync, make sure that all their configs live together and, and, and make sure they're updated together, um, is also that they, they're in tune with the orchestration that's happening around for the containers as well. So people have started to, to call, and I think it was Gartner that, that coined the term bimodal IT, and started talking about having you know, mode one and mode two. So the traditional uh, IT being mode one and the more agile IT being mode two. We've got different names for this at Citrix. We call them platform nine and platform 10. Because there's not a battle between these two as to which one's gonna win. It's they need to live together. And what we really wanna do is help you find platform nine and three quarters. So how do we bridge this gap? And that is this unified management piece that's gonna connect you know, the old and the new. And that, for us, is Netscale and Maz. So Netscale and Maz, any, any Spanish in here? No, anyone know what Maz means in Spanish? It means more. So we're trying to give you more, trying to do more with, with our, our management platform. So the Netscale and Maz, I don't know if anyone came to our booth and saw um, the videos running on loop, but showing how Netscale and Maz can you know, provision Netscale and CPX across uh, you know, a container environment and could also be driven by events coming from container orchestration such as Kubernetes and Marathon. So we're really building an environment where if you spin up you know, a bunch of replicas of your, of your application in containers, those events will come straight to Maz, Maz will go out and update all the relevant load balancers for you. We'll also, those load balancers will be doing service level monitoring, make sure the application is passing the tests that say it's up and running before they add it in and also remove them when they fail. So, just in summary, you know, Netscaler is a lot more than a load balancer. We have it in a number of different file, file form, uh, a number of different formats, so it can be, be consumed pretty much anywhere. <coughs> but uh, you know, also, we think we're well positioned to, to help you in, uh, in this new container environment. So finally, I'd just like to wrap up by saying we've had to make these changes on the way. We've had to continue to innovate with our technology we'd like to offer you something. If you could all do me a favor, I'd be really grateful. If you go to microloadbalancer.com, download your free version of CPX Express before our sales team find out we're giving something away for free. Thank you very much. <laughs>